Good morning all. Welcome to today's Cancer Healing Journey Talks. Myself, Annie Jones from Community Outreach Team of Zen on Co.io and Love Heals Cancer. Cancer Healing Journey Talks helps cancer survivors and caregivers to share their journey with vast number of survivors and caregivers who have traveled or been traveling through this journey. This can inspire and motivate them for their faster recovery as well. I would like to introduce today's speaker, Mike Robinson. He fought three cancers in the same time which was at stage four and he's also a founder of the global research center he does research on medical cannabis and that's how he cured himself by the use of medical uh, it's more of a plant uh, based medicines which he used okay welcome to today's session mike over to you no thank you so much for having me that's great you know, so can I, you please talk about your types of cancer and uh, how was it diagnosed um, I was first diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's diffuse large B cell, um, which is a very aggressive uh, non-Hodgkin's cancer back in 2003. I had multiple cancer battles. In 2003, I was diagnosed with this non-Hodgkin's and I opted for surgery and the chemotherapy, radiation treatments for for preventative medicine, and I had side effects that caused my right side to become paralyzed from the treatment. That was back in 2003. It was only one cancer. Um, I eventually began to walk again, got out of the wheelchair from the side effects of the cancer treatment, and, and lived my life. Um, in 2015, the cancer returned. Uh, by the time that I'd gone to the, the oncologist, uh, and had the workup done, they found two secondary cancers, prostate cancer and Hodgkin's lymphocytic were also with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma once again. So I now had three different cancers and they were all at stage four. Um, at that point, I was very upset. Hearing that you have cancer has to be one of the scariest things you can hear in your life. I didn't know what to do, but I did know that plant medicine and cannabis, cannabinoid medicine, which comes from hemp and other plants, right? That this could help heal me. I was not wanting to go after the traditional uh, cancer treatments once again, uh, due to the prior time in which the treatment caused paralysis. So, I started a journey using plant medicine in 2015 against these three very aggressive cancers. And over the following three years, I learned that it was very important to integrate uh, the oncology into the use of plant medicine. I believe that integrative medicine, using my oncologist along with the cannabis medicines allowed me to survive three cancers that likely would have killed me. Um, it was a long battle uh, that started with me bending over to pick something up. I heard a, a crack and a pain in my collarbone in 2015. And I went to the hospital thinking I broke a bone and the doctors took the x-rays. They went to go look at the x-rays and they found bone metastasis through my collarbone. And they came to me in 2015 at the hospital and asked me, have you ever had cancer? And I told them, yes, back in 2003. And that's, that's when I found out I had, I had cancer again. And, and from there, you know, I had to go, of course, to oncology appointments and go through the different scanning to look at all of it. And that's where I found out about secondary cancers. I'd never heard of that term before. And a doctor had told me, you know, we see these two other cancers with the cancer you have. And I asked him, why, you know, how come I have three cancers now instead of just the one I had before? And it was explained to me that even though treatments like chemotherapy and radiation can save people's lives, they also have the ability to give somebody a secondary cancer down the line because they are nuclear medicine and, and, and that can cause issues with people, um, including 
causing another cancer. So for me, my cancer journey was very long. It, it, it took quite some time um, in comparison to other people I've watched in a cancer battle. Uh, it was nearly four years of using the plant medicine and also working with oncologists and other doctors to, to monitor blood levels and the biomarkers so I could continue to treat myself. When a patient decides to use what we call cannabinoid medicine, they do not get the opportunity to have doctors with knowledge because our doctors have not learned about these plants. In some parts of the world, they're very illegal. Um, in other parts of the world, like America, um, they're, they're, they're medicinally legal in many states. Cannabis itself has been found in many cases to help people that have cancer to battle uh, side effects of chemotherapy and radiation, such as nausea and, and other effects. It also helps people eat, it stops wasting syndrome. And over the years, a lot of patients have learned that they could also use the plant for the actual battle uh, to, to beat the disease. And this is something that I've been researching for nearly a decade and work on every day. Still to this day, I research cannabinoid medicine and cancers. I want to make a very important point about how I got cancer. Because a lot of people, when they get diagnosed, they don't know how they got cancer, the way they lived, their lifestyle. There's all kinds of things to blame. Maybe their family members had the same cancer. But for me, I think it's very important to, to send a message to people to watch your teeth. I had a root canal, some work done, dental work done. And a dentist told me, we need to pull these teeth. You have very bad infection and it can get into your lymph nodes. And I didn't listen to that dentist. And I asked him to put a cap on the tooth. And he told me, if we don't pull this tooth, it can cause an infection that will go into your lymphatic system. And he actually warned me that some people end up getting cancer and lymphomas from the germs that flow through their mouth and through infected teeth. And I thought this dentist was just trying to scare me to pay more money or to you know, pull a tooth that didn't need to be pulled. So I, I didn't listen to him. And about a year later, you know, I had a problem with that tooth again. I went and saw another oral surgeon and that, or, that oral surgeon also told me the same thing. He told me that, that my lymph node was very swollen underneath the area of where I needed these teeth extracted. And then if I didn't get them pulled out, it could make me very sick. This was in the year 2000. So the first cancer battle happened in 2003. And when I was first diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, the very first thing they had to do was pull those teeth out, cut open the inside of my mouth and completely clean that whole area out because there was so much infection back here. And they explained to me that the infection had moved into my lymphatic tracts. And because I had a history of, in my family of having non-Hodgkin's, and had this problem with my teeth, that that was the cause. So I actually know what caused cancer in, in my case. And having that knowledge, I think it's very important to spread the message to people that when you have issues with your teeth like that, it's so much more important than just going to get the tooth fixed because our mouth is entrance to our whole body. And, and when we have something that gets infected in our mouth, our throat, our ears and nose, all these areas, they're very, very, they're all tied to our teeth. And, and so many different cancers can come from that. It's one area where I've done a lot of research because I was interested in how I got cancer and how I could possibly help others. And to this day, I will tell people, you know, 
If you don't want these, which are dentures, you're going to have fake teeth someday because one thing about having some cancer treatments is they can cause you to lose your teeth. So, you know, it's interesting that I start talking about oral hygiene in our, 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 our teeth because so many people, I believe, could avoid cancer if they just took better care of themselves. Now, for me, you know, I felt that, that, that when I first had cancer, that the options given to me weren't enough. You know, I, I was initially told we need to cut these lymph nodes out of your neck and have a scar from where they did it and from your armpit. And they did that so fast from, from when I first was told I had cancer. Within four or five days in the hospital, I was already, already had surgery done uh, two different times. And then I was presented with the treatment plan. I hadn't even left the hospital yet. And, you know, I do think that, that patients should look at every option that we have. There are so many different ways to improve our health. I, I don't believe that patients should get a message that tells them this is the only way that you can fight your battle. Um, I, I found that, that the Western medicine approach made me very, very sick and, and just made my life worse. I spent years in a wheelchair, but I found that when you look at the herbal medicine approach that I lived from it. I came out of it healthy and strong. And I'm now three years next month in full remission. After four years of battling cancer from 2015 to 2019, I finally went into, went into full remission in February of 2000. 19. So I'm just about three years in full remission. And at the same time, I celebrate three years of being 100% opioid free. One thing about getting cancer and having bone metastasis pain like I had is we often get a prescription to opioids for pain. Now we end up with cancer and an addiction. And I know a lot of people who have had cancer have battled this. Um, it's so much more than just the pain because when we're so upset, you know, I can't count the number of times when I had cancer that I would take a pain pill just to stop the pain in my heart, in my soul, in my body, in my mind. You know, I just wanted to feel, but I didn't want to think about having cancer. And, and I think that it's really important that patients who are taking pain medication, remember that these medicines can cause side effects that weaken our immune system. And we should be take as little as possible and try to get by, you know, and I just hope that anybody watching this may find some more information that helps them in their battle and, and, and find a way to, to beat cancer. It's, it's so many people die from this it's you know we've, we've been watching the world really in a frenzy over the covid pandemic but so many more people have died from cancer every day than from this virus there's no comparing the numbers it's 10 times more people yet we're not paying attention to what we need to do to not get cancer we're walking around putting face masks on People are getting shots, um, social distancing. How come we don't do these things for something that kills 10 times more people all the time, which is cancer? And, and that, that means we need to watch what we eat. We should have exercise. We should have the right nutritional supplements. Um, and again, herbal medicines, whenever we can have them. I think that nature is what allowed me to live. And without that, I know, I know I wouldn't be here if I would, wouldn't have gone with the natural course. But I do not think that anybody should try to copy what somebody else did to get better. 
We're all unique individuals. We all have a unique physiology and no, that means no two people are alike. So what works for me may not work for another person. And I think everybody should keep that in mind when they're battling cancer. You know, I had my um, multiple family members had died from the same cancer I got. And when I was first diagnosed, I think that's one of the things that went through my mind. How come I didn't listen? How come I didn't watch and pay attention? You know, watching my grandfather and mother, you know, fight these same cancers. And all I had to do was take get better care of my teeth, eat better food, you know, get a little more rest and, and look at my overall health. And I think it's, I think a lot of us forget that our life is very precious and we only get to live at one time and things like cancer can take it away. It's very important to take care of yourself. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, Mike. So that was a really wonderful um, talk. So, so just one question. So if you have to sum up your whole journey in one sentence, what would that be? I'm so happy I'm alive. I'm just so happy I'm alive. I've won. I won. Yeah, that was really wonderful. Thank you so much. And I'm pretty sure that this session will really motivate people out there who are currently battling cancer and um, who is undergoing through any kind of treatment or who are uh, doing some caregiving. So, yeah, thank you so much once again, Mike. So it was really wonderful. Thank you so much, too.